So welcome back, friends. I've got something very special for you today, something that you're probably not going to see anywhere. A good friend of mine, Jeremy, is a forester with a local timber company, and he uh, gave me, sent me a text the other day and said, we've got some equipment and some logging practices going on um, that uh, you might find really interesting that's not typically done out west. So I know that Jeremy, uh, and Grant, Take everything that I say here with a grain of salt because I'm not the expert on it. I'm just picking up tidbits here and there, but I'll explain it to you the best I understand it. So what uh, what they're finding uh, with these big timber stands is that um, they'll uh, once they're planted, everything will kind of grow up really quick, and they, there's so many trees and they're so dense that the growth rate really slows down. It almost just stops. I mean, when you look at the growth rings, they grow, grow, grow until the stand comes up and then everything slows down. Well, timber companies and logging loggers, are, they're in the business of harvesting trees. They want trees to grow as fast as possible. So what they're doing here is they're going in with this very specialized equipment uh, that's, did I say made in Finland? The Finnish, first the Hukapalitas, now this, uh, in Finland that um, is going through in its hand, it's selecting all of the trees and it's doing a thinning. And then they'll come back and then open it once everything's up they'll come back and then they can do the final cutting so everything you see behind me uh, it's fascinating how these this, these um, these processors work uh, there's three types of wood i think th maybe four types of wood that they have here these behind me are for pulp uh, these would be turned into i would imagine paper and such and there's three species there's a ponderosa pine there's white fir and there's red fir they're also um, grading peelers Peelers, I just learned today, are what they use for plywood. So if a log is of a certain grade or certain quality, they'll peel it, like just like you imagine like sharpening a pencil, and that's what you get for the sheets of plywood. Then there's going to be, uh, then there's some saw logs as well uh, that will do dimensional timber. And the fascinating thing about it is that the guy running this piece of equipment can grade everything right from the cap. deck of logs that's all prepped, uh, ready to load onto the logging trucks. And if you see these uh, paint stripes right here, these are actually done by the operator on the machine. So he obviously has a lot of experience and he can look at a log and know that this is suitable for a pulp log, or this is suitable for a peeler, or this is suitable for a saw log. And he activates uh, something on the machine that puts these stripes on there, which are color coded to mean something for the sawmill. So, it's, what's incredible is that these guys are going through here and they are, there's two guys and two machines and they're doing everything from start to finish. They're cutting, uh, they're limbing, uh, they're cutting to length, they're grading, and they, if, if I understand correctly, they can even produce kind of a, a printout of how many board feet that they got through that day. I mean, it's absolutely astonishing what a uh, benefit this would be uh, for the sawmill company, whoever's buying the logs, to have everything just done for them um, and take them down there and, uh, uh, and away you go. It's just incredible.
just look at that production. I mean, that's two guys in just a couple days have, uh, have done that work. I want to show you before and after. So here's the other side of the street. They're going to be going in uh, next and doing this in here, but you can look in there and see, um, man, that's really dense. It's almost, it's too, really too dense to walk through without, you know, getting, it's just brushy in there. Imagine, you can imagine that those trees are probably not doing very well. There's a lot of competition for resources, water and nutrients, and there it, it's a potential fire hazard too. If you've got a fire in there, uh, man, it's all bets are off. Let me show you what it looks like when they're done. So if we go over here to the other side of the road, look at that. <laughs> that's incredible. And that's, that's not, uh, that's two guys sitting in a cab of a machine um, producing that. The trees are not barked, uh, meaning they're not all scuffed up. They've left uh, some of the larger ones. They're going to uh, thrive. They're going to flourish. They're going to grow so much faster. Uh, you have, um, a, I mean, it looks like a park in there. It's just beautiful. It's just incredible to me. The amount of work, you know, I can really appreciate that. Having cleared my own forest by hand uh, to, to get it to that level is, um, I, it's just hard to believe. And the care that the guys take and, and how skilled they are running that equipment uh, to op, you know, to swing around in there. And, and I mean, I can look all the way across here and I rarely see any little bit of bark knocked off. It's just amazing. Doesn't that look nice? So there's the before. <laughs> Zoom you out here. Not so nice. And the after. Wow. So I thought you might enjoy watching that equipment operate. It would be much better if I could get Jeremy on camera here and he could kind of explain what's going on. He actually knows what he's talking about, but just some simple fun facts. Uh, these two machines, um, I believe, are made in Finland. Uh, they, um, they're, they work as a pair, um, and they, the cost of the two of them, I think, was right about $1.2 million, give or take, somewhere in there for the pair, um, and then two guys are operating them. I uh, spoke with the operators. I know on the loader that was loading the bunk said he goes through about 50 gallons of diesel a day, and that's a 10 to a 12-hour day. They, they really hit it hard out here. Um, what other things were there? Um, and I know that the cutter, the machine you saw, the cutter with the processing head, uh, can operate on crazy angles. I forgot what they said, but um, the whole cab and the controls and everything all self-level. So he can have the tracks down. They've got some that have winches on the front. They'll anchor them up on the top and they'll go down these insane slopes. Uh, it'll self-level and then the guy in, in there can run everything. Full air conditioned, full cab. Uh, but incredible, just absolutely amazing to watch. Uh, it was really a uh, privilege to get that footage and share it with you because these are, this is kind of a new way of doing things and I don't think it's being done by a lot of timber companies uh, going in and, and doing a thinning like this. Maybe it's been in the past that it just hasn't been financially feasible to, and there wasn't, the equipment wasn't available. And I think that's why Jeremy went over to, to, to Finland to, to see this and bring it back to the States to implement it. But uh, pretty interesting stuff. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. And we'll see you guys on the next one.